In this clip, we're going to talk about shot movements and composition. So this is about how the camera moves and why the camera moves. So if we think about why the camera moves, really we need to think about the motivation that makes the camera move. So think about what, what's motivated within your shot. Is it the subject moving? You know, is it um, the story dictates movement and motion? You know, are we following the subject? Are we moving on to a new scene? Are we following the action? You know, why are we moving the camera rather than making a cut? So are these all style choices that you need to make, which might be motivated by the genre, motivated by the way you shoot, motivated by the performance, motivated by the way you can edit, motivated by the way you think, you know, the audience might see the shot and see the performance, or completely motivated by something like the economy of the shot. In fact, it might be easier to move your camera than move the shot and set up a game. So these are all things which are really significant to your shot in terms of that motivation. You know, is it a natural motivation? Or as I've already said, does it go against, you know, the story needs, but does it work on a higher emotional level? So how the camera moves. So the camera moves firstly in terms of lens. So we might think about the camera moving in terms of lens length. So this is, as I've already said, might be from a wide lens to a telephoto lens. So this is simply zooming in and out. So that's the first movement. Secondly, another movement is focus. You know, we might think, well, focus isn't really moving. There's always the ability to pull focus. So we could be focused on a subject in the foreground and then pull focus to, sub to focus on a subject in the background. So already, in terms of what we see in that frame, the distance has changed. In terms of moving the lens, the camera constantly remains static. So in terms of, you know, pulling focus or zooming in and out, it's still a static camera. So there is movement in the shot, but the camera doesn't move at all. If we move on to some other explanations how the camera moves, we can look at terms such as pan, tilt, track, crane, and dolly. So first of all is the pan movement. So the panning movement is where the camera remains static and you can pan the camera from left to right, right to left, east to west or west to east. And the camera will always stay on a horizontal axis. So it will stay in one subject position and move, as I say, left to right or right to left. Again, the pan is great for following characters who are entering or leaving shot or moving around the shot yeah, it depends on the size and the scale that you want your camera to, where your shot to be. Again, the camera remains static at all times, and this is really used for creative control. The next method is the tilt shot. So the tilt works on in terms of vertical axes, which is up and down or north to south. Um, again, the camera remains static, but the tilt can be used to show height and power relations. So again, a low angle shot that tilts up might, might be viewing someone in terms of power or a high angle shot that tilts down might be viewing someone in terms of low power. Again, think about this as a point of view shot from one character to the next and how different characters would look at each other. Again, the tilt shot is often used to um, used as a reveal, you know, so it reveals a different element of the shot that we've not seen that's just been out of the frame previously. And also it's used a lot for suspense. Okay, the next shot then is a tracking shot. So a tracking shot goes left to right, backwards to forwards. So this can be a steady cam. So if you're familiar with a steady cam, it's a harness that fits on where people can move around fluidly with the shot. You know, a tracking shot will follow action. It will be able to freely go anywhere. So it contains elements of the pan and tilt um, it's usually at a fixed height, um, so again, if it's strapped to someone's body, it will always remain at that person's um, subject height. You know, also it involves um, elements of a tilt as well, so it can combine all the other elements in terms of the camera moves physically. So it's this is the first time the camera moves from that static position, and it works across you know the horizontal and the vertical axes. So the next one is a dolly shot. So the dolly shot moves on tracks um, and the dolly shot is, is 
call this because it sits on a dolly and the dolly will sit on the tracks and move. So this follows the action smoothly um, and it's very similar to a tracking shot. So again, the camera moves physically, it's not static and the camera can move left to right and forwards and backwards. The next shot is a crane shot. The crane shot is where the camera moves physically and can be a combination of all the other shots which includes a dolly shot. So in a crane shot the camera moves backwards and forwards, left to right, up and down. Again, if you're familiar with the film set, you must have seen the cranes where they'll have big swooping shots come into scene. So again, the crane shot could be used to give a wide shot that um, over time goes into a close-up shot. Again, a crane shot might start high up and then slow down. It means the camera can move anywhere within the subject. A tracking shot is usually the same distance between the camera and the subject all the way through the shot, whereas a crane shot will often um, differ hugely throughout the duration of that shot. So if we think about all these movements and think about different types of shots, there's the simple shot, there's the complex shot, and there's the developing shot. The simple shot is often the most effective storytelling shot. Even though it's static, it's not always the most easy shot to produce. The simple shot is singular, so the attention of the audience is directed towards the subject. Choices must be made on framing, relationships within the shot and sequence, focus, background, style, colour, movement within the frame. The next shot is the complex shot, and the complex shot contains the movement of subject, movement of lens, movement of panel tilt, movement of all, and the camera still remains static. So this is a shot made up of a movement of a subject or object made with the movement of a pan or till or both. There are five closely connecting parts, the subject movement, lens focus movement, changing the focal length, panning and tilting. Okay, the next shot is the developing shot. So this contains the movement of a subject, movement of a lens, movement of pan or till, movement of camera, movement of all. So the developing shot, this is a movement that incorporates all these elements, but also the movement of a camera. Developing means the act of starting one thing and changing to another. Consequently, the background changing becomes more important as the scene location has changed and is giving us more information. As the variation of movement is limitless, the developing shot differs from a complex shot in that the camera mounting moves from one place to another. Consequently, the change in background as the viewpoint changes becomes much more important. How best to choose one of these shots? Well, really think about you know, what kind of story you're telling and what style of shot will best suit that story. So in terms of choice, the filmmaker often chooses more complex and developing shots to convey a sequence, thinking that the complexity will add to the story and the style. However, be careful that you do not incorporate movement for style. Shot movement is a continual reframing of the shot, and new choices have to be made within the whole construction of a sort of sequence. There must be a change in dramatic action that motivates movement within a complex shot and a cut in a simple shot. The action is the same. So this gives you an overview of a camera in terms of composition and in terms of shot movement. There's a number of clips around this one that I really want you to watch in terms of cinematography and camera movements and style. What we're going to move on to next is talking about lights and really the basic three-point lighting setup. So if you watch the next clips, you know, we'll talk about more about composition and we'll get to understand a little bit more about lighting and how this can affect our shots in terms of you know, conveying our narrative and story. So if you'll watch the next few clips, this will give you more information.